got the donut on. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to be locked in a cage for weeks at a time? No. Or to only be given enough food to just bear to be able to survive? No. Or to even be forced to participate in fights just for the entertainment of others? Well, sadly to say, many animals are forced to participate. I mean, they know these scenarios very well. I've done some research which allowed me to reduce animal abuse in three focal points. The three forms of animal abuse that are having the biggest impact on America include animal abandonment, animal neglect, and animal fights. Animal abandonment is a common form of abuse throughout the country. I'm sure many of you go on walks or drives and you see different animals just minding their own business and their habitat, but other animals you see are like this dog. They were abandoned, left alone, and their, their pets. The Audubon Society of Portland says that an animal is considered abandoned when it is domesticated and left at a location without having the owner's continued care. Animal abandonment is a serious crime that shouldn't be taken lightly. I'm sure none of you would like to be just left alone with no place to stay, sleep, feed, nowhere to wash off like this animal here. Animal abandonment is considered a class C misdemeanor which can be punishable with up to a thousand dollar fine or thirty dollars in jail. The main abandoned animals that you usually see roaming the roads are, include cats and dogs. But you can even find other animals such as birds or hedgehogs. Even though a lot of people abandon their animals because they either get tired of having them or just can't financially afford to keep them. Some animals are released into wild because the owners felt it was in their best tr trust. These owners don't understand that since they're domesticated, the animal is no longer fit to life in the wild. A lot of the, animal in the animal's instincts have gone dormant and has become more dependent on the outside help. I remember when I used to live in New York, we had an indoor cat, and he enjoyed living with us. We played with him, we fed him and everything. But when we moved down here, I guess, readjust, trying to adjust to the countryside was a hard thing for him, so he ended up running away. He was so used to being a regular indoor cat. So, I don't think he would have survived in the wall like a lot of cats we have here. The best ways to eliminate animal abandonment are to not release your animals into the wall. You probably, if you don't want your pet anymore, you could take them to a shelter or give them to a neighbor or a friend who might want it. And if you see anybody else trying to release the animal into nature, tell them that it's not the right thing to do. Another form of animal abuse includes animal fighting. It causes a lot of pain and damage to the animal. Over the years, many people have been enjoying this odd entertainment of animal fighting. A lot of these fights include animals such as dogs and roosters. These fights aren't just had for viewing pleasures, they're also big for gambling. Betting on, betting on which animal will leave the ring victorious, whether dead or severely injured. Even though these events might seem very enjoyable for many, it does not change the fact that it is very illegal. 
as stated by the Animal Legal Defense Fund, also known as the ALDF, dog fighting is a felony in all 50 states, while rooster fights are illegal in all 50 states. If knowing that doesn't make you reconsider being, being involved in such activities, you should also know that this is a federal defense which falls under the Animal Welfare Act and the Animal Fighting Prohibition Enforcement Act of 2007. State charges are usually taken into action when it is just small cases of animal fights, like just people in their backyard bringing their dogs to fight each other. But federal charges come into play when it's a whole network where people are delivering large amounts of animals across states just to be in these large underground fighting rooms. A big case that I'm sure many of you have heard of was the Michael Vick case. He, um, he had a lot of dogs in his yard that he forced to fight, and if they didn't fight well, he would torture them, hang them, electrocute them, and in the end, just kill them. A lot of the dogs with their fights, they end up like this dog. Michael Vick, after, after they found out about his dog fights, he was charged with 23 months in prison, as stated by the Washington Post. As bad as it might sound, Michael Vick is only one of many who participated in these actions. According to CNN, an estimated 40,000 people participated in these dog fights. That number does not even include all the people who participated in other types of dog fights. The next form of animal abuse is animal neglect. It is a form of abuse that separates the good owners from the bad. As I grew up, I had a lot of pets, so I started to develop a love for animals. I'm sure many of you who own pets, you can understand the importance of taking care of that pet every day. Simple duties such as feeding them, washing them, and making sure their medical needs are met. As easy as this may sound, a lot of people either find it hard to do these things or just don't care about putting in the effort for their pets. This is what we call animal neglect. As you can see, the picture on the left is a dog who obviously was neglected and very malnourished. But the dog on the right is a picture of an animal what he, what he should look like what a healthy dog should look like, happy, running around, not just skin and bones. The people who participate in ignoring the daily needs of their pets are also granted the gift of either state or federal charges. As bad as that may have sounded, it actually gets worse. Besides the people who fail to take care of a few pets, there are actually people who participate in hoarding and puppy mills. Incidents like these deal with large groups of animals not being properly taken care of. According to the Animal Legal Defense Fund, most states have their own laws regarding animal neglect, but they're all usually misdemeanor violations. Federal charges come into play when it comes to things such as transporting large animals across states and animals being taken care of at stores. A good example of these kind of charges was the ARDF versus Woodley case. The Woodley's family was hoarding over 300 dogs. Uh, as you could imagine, that would be very difficult to take care of over 300 dogs in one house. 
veterinarian came to visit their home and saw that there were just feces and urine all over the house and a lot of very sick dogs. Some dogs, they were just sitting, sitting in cages in their own weight. Many of them had their jaws broken. Just in very, they were all just in very hard condition. But the court, they, the court ruled in favor of the American Legal Defense Fund, which allowed them to get legal custody of all of the dogs. So with that, they took the dogs to the vet, made sure all of them were brought back, nursed back to health, and they were all given a home to stay in. Even though three forms of animal abuse that are having the biggest impact on America include animal abandon, fights, and neglect, people can make life for animals a lot easier. Since there are many groups, like the American Legal Defense Fund, people can start to make a difference and bring these statistics down. Anyone can join the cause in big or small ways, as you can see here in the picture. You can join different groups, such as an animal rescue organization. As you can see, people are rescuing a horse from the flood. Or you can even adopt your own pet, like this dog here. You should treat animals the way you would want to be treated if you were someone's pet. Thank you for your time.